or welcome to St Jude's in our Sunday service. I'm outside. Uh, last weekend was Remembrance Sunday and you got quite a few views of the inside of the church so today I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you something of the outside and there's a reason for that uh, that we'll discover later as we come to our reading as well. But St Jude's has been welcoming people onto this plot of land since 1875 when the foundation stone was first laid and Gathering in a building is an important thing for us as Christians, but you know, it's not the only thing, is it? And currently, we aren't allowed to do that. But I do pray that as you're at home today, as you're watching this, that you'll find yourself as part of the community of the church. And a big part of that is welcoming the Holy Spirit in as we worship. It's something we try to do every weekend as we gather within the church but it's a good practice as we gather. Maybe you've got a cup of coffee in your hand and just getting ready for this morning service. That welcoming of the Holy Spirit is, is the unifying fact of the whole church. And uh, it's a good thing to do. And we'll use the song that's gonna follow in a second as an opportunity to just reflect and think about our lives, uh, how well they reflect God. Have we done what we need to do with what we've been given? Are we people who support our family and friends and neighbours. If there are things we find we need to reflect on and apologise for, well this is a good time to do that too, to say directly to God that we're sorry for things and ask for his forgiveness. And so as this first song plays, I pray that we will all know the presence of the Holy Spirit with us today. Here's our song.
The Parable of the Bags of Gold Again it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five bags more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, You entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share the master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid, and went out and hid your gold on the ground. See. Here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him, and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thanks for that reading. We're, um, we're standing in the midst of the church site now and I, I want to do that to give you a sight of all the buildings we have we have the church here we have our top hall here over here we've got church cottage and right off to the side here we've got our lower hall and when the church was built in 1875 within 30 years they built both halls because they must have found the need for some flexible space that couldn't be achieved with the pewed building and we're moving into that phase ourselves We've done a lot of maintenance work on all of these buildings so that they can operate and work well, but our church building still struggles with that flexibility. And so we hope in 2021 that we'll be doing what we call our next era project to take what we've been given, to turn it into something that remains useful and purposeful. And this reading we've had uh, of the parable of Jesus, where he, he talks of the master who leaves his wealth with his servants and then goes away and then returns and wants to see what they've done with what they've been left. It's important for us as a, here as a church community but it's also important for all of us in our own individual lives because well first of all we don't know when the when the end will be we don't know whether Jesus will come back or there'll be that day when we meet him face to face but the parable suggests 
The master is Jesus. The parable suggests that he will want to know what we've done with what we've had. And I've definitely filmed ourselves amongst church buildings because for us at St Jude's, there's a danger in buildings. Because either as individuals, as a community, we have a tendency to want to look after things, to collect things, to keep them shiny, to put them in cabinets and show them off. But actually, God doesn't give us things to bury. He gives us things to use. He wants to see that we've taken something and used it with a purpose. I'm not saying the buildings aren't important, they are, uh, and you know, we've gratefully received them for a prior generation. We've got the privilege of doing some work on them now, so we can pass them on to a future generation. But the buildings themselves aren't what is important, it's what we do with those buildings. And the changes in our church are going to enable us to, as a church community, to mix with our local community far more, to serve them. Because it's not about being in a service, it's about being people of service. It's of those of us who can do things to help our community see something of God's kingdom through us. And so there's this problem that we could have with heritage of wanting to preserve and fix things. We think of the many stately homes where we, we visit them and we look at them and we go, oh, aren't they grand? But they aren't fulfilling the purpose that they used to have. They were the centre of an industry of farming or something similar. But we know that's not the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church is to be God's people joined together where the Holy Spirit can dwell. And when the master returns, will he see the buildings and say, well done? Or will he see what we've done with the buildings and say, well done? Will he see what we've been given as individuals and say, done? Well done. Will he want to see how we've used our lives rather than what we've accumulated? So I pray that we'll have an opportunity to ponder on that parable a little longer. And I pray I'm going to go back inside now because it's just started to rain on me. We've got another song coming up now.
Let's pray. Lord, we come before you with thankful hearts for your never failing promises of forgiveness, acceptance, understanding, healing and compassion. Lord, wherever we are at this moment, we are thankful that we can all ask for and receive your forgiveness. We each can take a moment now to lift before you something we know we have done which is not pleasing to you. Something which hasn't been done which would make a difference to the lives of others or to ourselves. And something that we keep getting wrong. We ask for your help, Father, to guide each one of us in your ways. Lord, we thank you that we are all equally accepted by you. Lord, you have no barriers and each person is known to and loved by you. Help each person to be accepting of another's offering, of their choices and abilities. Help each of us to hear your will in what we offer and not to push ahead rushing around in our own strength so that we are seen to be busy. Help us now to rest in your presence. Lord, in our lives there may be turmoil, fear, uncertainty, confusion, doubts, sorrow, and possibly for some, anger, grief and despair. Lord, we might not have the words to express how things are, how we are really feeling, and maybe we have nobody to share with about whatever our current situation is. We take a moment now to reach out our open hands and receive from you a peace and love which the world cannot give. Lord Jesus, our Saviour, who sees our lives and understands our situation, whatever that might be. We thank you that you are always there. Lord, in times of suffering and pain, whether that is physical, emotional or spiritual, we thank you for your healing power. Bring to those who walk alongside the people we know who are suffering in any way the skills, knowledge and strength to continue their work. Bring to those who are suffering the grace to take hold of your hand and walk the journey set before them. Help them to do this with a peace that flows from the never failing stream of your healing power. Lord, we lift before those who need to know the power of your healing touch in any way at this time. Lord of compassion, fill each one of us anew so that we can be the listening ear, the smiling face, the practical helper, the shoulder to cry on, the companion or maybe the one who can signpost appropriately to assist in different ways. Help us all never to assume someone else is assisting and to remain aware of our equal need to reach out to all and do whatever is possible. Lord, as the many threads of life are tangled and the colours of the weave seem dim and dull, as the holes in the fabric seem too big to be repaired now, help me see that you can make it whole. Where the seconds of each hour seem too long now, and pain with uncertainty lies ahead, will I walk with you now in doubt, or truly trusting in the promises of your healing with golden threads? So that where there is weakness you sow strength, Lord, enough for this hour or for this day, and where there is grieving, please bring comfort as in my, the arms of my Saviour, I will stay. Where there are unrealistic expectations, 
Bring me back to the place where I belong and in the peace and the calmness I will worship you with the most beautiful songs. So into our hearts, Lord, the colours of the beauty in knowing you are there, a rainbow of threads never fading, a carpet of beauty on each stair. So as we climb the pathway of life, Lord, we can reach out and hold on to your hand. And in each situation that we face now, Lord, shine the light forever across this land. Amen. Well, we're near the end of our time together this morning and I've uh, finished by standing on one of the new ramps that we built recently between our halls. There's a great danger that we can put barriers up uh, spiritually and practically towards people engaging uh, with God and his kingdom. And uh, one of the things we definitely found here on our site was almost everywhere had steps. Uh, our top hall, which is just to my side here, and this is our lower hall, our top hall had a ramp, but it was like the side of the pyramids. So um, we had to invest in ramps just to enable people to get round our site. And here's one of them. It's rather magnificent, don't you think? Uh, as ramps go. 
Anyway, the reason I mention it is that uh, God places no barriers in front of us. He longs for us to be part of his family. You might remember the parable of the prodigal son where uh, the son decided it was time to return to his father and, and on his way the father saw him a long way off and ran to him and embraced him. There were no barriers to the son returning to the father, to the child coming home. And that's the same for all of us. If you felt you've been going in the wrong direction or that you've uh, not really been part of, of God's life and family, then you can always return to him at any point at any time. And so I pray that today as we finish before our last song, that you will, you will know the Father running towards you to embrace you, that you will know uh, the Son, Jesus, is there applauding you as you become part of the family and that the Holy Spirit will accompany you on your journey. May you know the blessing of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God Almighty, today and always. Amen. I hope you have a good week, that you stay safe and be blessed. And now here's our final song, which has got a title of Come Now Is The Time To Worship. That's an odd title, isn't it, to finish with? But actually it reflects the fact that our worship is in our lives, not in what we do inside a church building. It's time for us to go and be his people amongst our friends and family and community and neighbours. So as he's described in Romans, as give our lives as acts of worship. And so come, now is the time to worship. See you next week. <laughs>